what synthesizers you use on stage, what you use in the mm. studio, what are your favorites? Yeah. Well, I mean, I use very, di it's very different from, you know, because the road, you need, you know, got to be practical. I right. want all the power of what I use in the studio, but I want it to work on stage. So, you know, um, <laughs> taking all the vintage synths out, which I used to do in, you know, the beginning, because there was no other alternative. Sure. Yeah. But they just get trashed on the road. And you, so you'd have to have like a team of techs, mm -hmm. you know, like probably you guys, you know, would have to come on the road with us to constantly keep them in. So I, you know, I, I use emulations of, um, of my favorite keyboards, you know, Jupiter 8, you know, 60, Pro 1, you know, uh, CS80, you know, the, the modulars. And, um, and then I can stack everything up t together in, in, in main stage and uh, I've become reasonably proficient with that. Um, you know, and I know a lot of people, you know, would love you to see all those old synths up on stage, but you know, it's just, it's not gonna give them the sound that I want them to hear. Um, so, so it's all about that, isn't it? At the end of the day, what sounds best for the, for the thing? When I'm in the studio, I have my Jupiter 8 and Juno 60, the you know, Pro 1, and, and I have a VL1 Yamaha, I have mm. DX7, and you know, drum machines and, all, and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not a huge collector. I don't have a CS8. Well, if I need anything, I'll just go to BT's studio. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's threatened to come and um, buy me a load of analog gear again for my <laughs> studio and come and wire it up. I don't have to play it. <laughs> when you when you get back to your studio and the Jupiter Eight and things like yeah, that, do yeah. you do you have a moment of reuniting and that? Oh yeah, um, uh, absolutely. Yeah, and nothing really quite, quite sounds like though you know those original keyboards. And of course, I know them so well because yeah. I grew up with them. So I just go straight. You know, it's like I can get sounds quick on them and love them. And and I always go. <gasps> God, I can't believe how good that sounds. <laughs> you know, when I've got it in the in the in the uh, on my speakers. But yeah, so um, you know, anything with keys, though. You know, I mean, I think you know the point is, is that you know, you should be able to make great music with whatever instrument mm -hmm. you have. So it's not really the instrument, is it? It's you. You know, you're a guy who makes good music. Um, and then, so if you, I, I like to spend sometimes with something times with a very simple software synth, a really simple one, and make a great sound with that. Spend all day, maybe. Um, um, and then, you know, but I like to layer things up a lot as well. I always did that in the early days with MIDI. It was the early days of MIDI. And the song like Hide and Seek, for instance, you know, um, it was basically two passes, but lots of different synths. I used the Prophet um, T8, you know, it's one of my favorites, because you had that sort of poly aftertouch mm -hmm. and you could bring sounds through um, and that's very much a feature of that song so it sounds like I did like loads of overdubs I actually just picked my sounds carefully and um, brought different sounds through according to pressure and velocity and stuff like that there's a lot of that the first album was it was pre-sequencer really um, so there was, nearly everything was played the drum machines ran the 808s uh, had a trigger, a MIDI tr um, you know, rhythm, uh, triggering other things, samples. But um, yeah, was, so I play all the bass lines were played. So it has that sort of slightly loose feel, but not sequence. I mean, I love the sequence sound as well. I love both things. So yeah. But it's quite obvious you can you can rip it up on the uh, yeah yeah on the keyboard yeah yeah yeah. I um well I've been playing since I was seven so. Yeah, I mean, I, I studied classical piano, you know, for 13 years. What was and your first synthesizer? Uh, first synth was the, um, the Moog Prodigy. I know it's not regarded as a, a vintage era of Moog, but I mean, it's for me, it was like, keyboard. oh man, because I, I especially with the, the sync, you could, you could assign one of the wheels to just do sync between the, synth, uh, mm -hmm. the oscillators, and that was a key thing for me. It just was sounded so aggressive and then so I, I you know the story was I got I bought one and it cleaned me out obviously and then but they sent me another one by mistake so I had two Moog prodigies that so I thought right I'll use this one for bass and I'll use this one for my lead lines and it was a bit of a trademark thing for me so the two were on the top of my rack 
Um, and um, so yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, I did pay for the other one as well, as I didn't want to get off to a bad start. With, <laughs> Get yeah. that karma out. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't good. Yeah. Because yeah. of what we did extensively as well, Robbie, who I work, I've always worked with, um, any sounds that we couldn't get quite right, we, we'd sample into, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sample everything meticulously so that we can get those authentic sounds. Also, the other thing that this enables me to do is have different sounds spread over the keyboard. So yep. I, I have. And then also, um, there's. And we don't do it in a set tonight, but there's one song where it's velocity dependent. So if I give it a good whack, you get one sound in the soft and others. And you can do that many layers of that if you want. Things like um, Everlasting Love. I don't, I, I used to be assigning these to all sorts of different parameters, um, but I don't have much time to do that <laughs> during the show. <laughs> I'm performing and playing and singing and, and moving around. But things like, you know, everlasting love here. Um, I've got, you know, the faders assigned here so I can bring in a whole bunch of other sounds, um, you know, during, um, during, uh, during uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. the middle section. Yeah. And then just whack them back. Um, but as I say, I don't really have too much time to do that. I'm, I am moving around a lot, but I've got it like a, a Jupiter, a Jupiter 8. Um, and then also sampled my my Jupiter as well on the in the EX24. So you've got a mixture of old and new, <laughs> giving it a good thick sound. I also like um, I also I'm a big fan of chord triggers when I can't play everything at once. I, when I'm doing lots of things, assign one note to a chord. Um, like for instance, in What Is Love. I do well. Don't know if you'd be able to hear it. No. So that's, each one's got a chord on it. Because it means that I can get each, I mean, I can, obviously I can play it. But it doesn't sound so, so sequenced, because it's slightly different timing between your fingers. But with this, that's a cool thing. What piece yeah. of advice would you go back and give a young, a young you? Uh, <laughs> I think, I think uh, the, the, big, the best piece of advice is just don't worry. It'll, all, it'll be okay, don't. Because well, my thing was, oh, this is all gonna go overnight. And I'm, you know, it's all a dream. And I'm gonna wake up and suddenly this didn't happen. You know, and, and, and that was a shame to have wasted time thinking that. You know, it can go on as long as you have the passion for it. And as long as you wanna put the work in and keep things going, you can keep refining and, and building it. That's what I would have said. Don't worry, you know, it'll, it'll be all right. See, I've got like um, three Jupiter 8 stacked, wow. slightly different sounds to get a real mm -hmm. thick sound. Yeah. Like one isn't enough. No, one's <laughs> not. It's never, never enough. enough. <laughs>